Okay, landscape with a cliff. That's a famous Japanese painting. It has the fur of LBJ's back. Now, here's a perfect example, like I was saying, that, that I couldn't do this on Cosmoetica. I was actually thinking of this particular poem with the, the, the lines, you know, uh, sort of falling down, scattered like that sideways, you know, the unbending brow and what constitutes a moment is the last line. But anyway, go ahead. And this uses two epigraphs. He uses humor as the first of the gifts to perish in a foreign tongue by Virginia Woolf. Yeah. And, uh, and then, but what is the second by yourself? And it uses these slanted lines that you have here, which you can only do with a typewriter or some kind yeah. of other processor. And uh, in a way, it reminds me of Octavio Paz's work because he does things like this. Um, he does not he's not as consistent as you as a poet, but he is a underrated great poet himself. Yeah. Um, uh, and it also connects the, the landscape with the cliff and I encourage people to go and look at that painting as the furrow of LBJ's brow. Now that's an interesting connection there. That's very negative capable and you'll only be able to understand it once you read the full poem. And then of course it's the little fuck you to Bill Bessett by saying compliments to Bill Bessett, yeah. uh, who is himself a, a dog realist. And it go it uses these slanted uh, lines which kind of mirror how the how the painting is, but at the same time it takes it in a totally different direction. Yeah, are you still, did you drop one? No, I did for a second though. Okay, so what? what so talk, talk, talk to me about uh, how this poem is an example of ekphrastics. Uh, is there an influence from Paz in how you kind of structure the the lines the way they are? Because the slanted lines, you can in jab them in different ways. It's kind of similar to what we were talking about with star sonnets where you'll get several different narratives just based on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at the, uh, the, the original painting because it's been years since I've seen it. Um, I'm trying to see landscape now. I'm trying, I'm it's not... also a cyclical narrative because it starts at what constitutes a moment and ends what constitutes a moment. Yeah. One, however, it's key to note is a question mark at the beginning. And yeah. it lacks a question mark at the end, so it's yeah. almost a, it's almost as if you've answered your own question. This yeah. is an example too of of how you've mentioned often, artists don't just raise questions; they also answer them. So in the Vincetti brothers, you you talk about evil characters set up against the whole cartel, and uh, Big Frank's character being a perfect example of an, of evil, but at the same time. You answer many of the questions you raise. You don't, do, and the same the same way that Moby Dick does in in its questions about evil. Well, the LBJ thing. Th this is basically presumably going on in the mind of LBJ. And there's, fa there's several famous photographs of LBJ during the the Vietnam War era, where he's looking at one of his advisors or something, and his the, his brow is furrowed, and you know, he died. I think only two or three years after he got out of office, maybe four or five. So he he the the job basically wrecked his health and whatnot. And so the this, this is sort of just and I again I don't have the the actual painting before me, but uh, as far as the LBJ aspect of it, you know, he's someone here who's looking off, and he, he and you, again this is something someone who doesn't know. Uh, uh, you know, doesn't know a lot about this. Uh, you know, someone, a kid born today, reading this twenty years from now, it, it may not resonate as much uh, in regards to the LBJ thing. But um, you know, it, it's one of the, this. This is a, a a poem where you you try to to pull something out of the image, and I don't even recall what the image was initially, but it it, it probably did stick with me because when I Google it, it doesn't come up. But uh, um, uh, let me just see a Kanoho guy. Uh, yeah, I tried Googling as well. Um, but it may... It, I, I'm, I'm sure I probably have it in one of my... I, I'm, I've got a book of Japanese paintings. It's probably in one of those. So that's that's where I got it from. But I don't, I'm not going to waste the time to, to get it now. But again, it, it, it's a way to, to, to show the jumble of the minds. And some, of, some of these here, I think when he says that uh, uh, success must be told, failure is no option... Those are quotes or, or semi quotes or, or things that uh, LBJ had said at various points in his administration, um, and 
you know, it's just a way to sort of portray his character, his mindset at a particular moment. Um, and again, using using that because Bill, like I said, Bill Bissett uh, was someone who did that, did play around with stuff. But there was no there was no deeper thought, no deeper uh, intellect going on in any of Bissett's poems. Whereas with here, you have that.